in an effort to catch up with my friend in England, Kevin, I've uh, been working on my house this week and think I've got it pretty much ready for wallpaper. So I'll have to show you everything that I did with it. So just kind of showing you before anything was painted, this is what it looked like. <laughs> Greetings everyone, so you can see my next phase of this uh, model 43 or 37, whichever you prefer, uh, is to put the Bondo on the roof, car filler as we call it, ready to flat and ready for paper, and also I've now completely fixed the new roof and sanded it where it needs to go. So also if it's not too dark you can see where I've taken off what I needed to as much as I dare and kept as much as possible of the uh, wallpapers There's a little bit of dust up there so take no notes of that uh, and I'll try and keep this now and touch it in wherever I can Later on I'll be talking about the stucco, or as we call it in England, pebble dash, or rough cast, and the history of it, and how it made a, a resurgence in the Edwardian period where this house, or at least leases, was made. Uh, but we'll be talking about that, as I say, in uh, the next episode, after we've finished flatting this uh, bondo. Okay, so this is the first sanding uh, of the uh, Bondo. Now, my grandfather, who was a professional lead loader in the car industry, he used to say to me about feeling to see how flat it is. And uh, Lisa's husband is a professional car body guy, so he's probably going to be laughing, but uh, <laughs> I've done a few cars. So we'll need to uh, apply more Bondo yet uh, where the ridges are and peaks and troughs and uh, try and level it out. It's not that critical because obviously this is wallpapered but having said that you want the wallpaper to ad adhesive to uh, glue on squarely and look flat and nice at the end of it so you've got to get it reasonably accurate. Uh, but uh, we'll put some more on. Okay, so uh, there's another little bit of filling done where necessary. And uh, actually, what was rather useful, there was some cracks in this uh, stucco uh, pebble dash. And uh, I've used some of the Bondo to fill in the cracks. And to be honest, it covers up a multitude of sins uh, because you can actually make it into more pebble dash, which is great. So something that Lisa has asked me to talk about uh, is uh, woodworm and how to treat it. Here in England it's quite prevalent, uh, particularly in these old dolls houses and antiques in general. It's mainly because of the timber they used, which is quite soft ply or, or pine. And uh, woodworms do get into it in the right uh, kind of conditions, which are normally damp. So it's really a numbers game with woodwork, particularly here in England, but they tended to like uh, solid pine and plywood, particularly if they're antique, whether it be an antique piece of furniture or a doll's house, the same. This 45 that I've got was, was uh, quite badly infected, uh, but treated by myself now. And uh, it's not prevalent in Canada due to the cold weather, so any Canadians needn't worry about it generally. Now I also want to talk a little bit about the introduction of Pebble Dash and uh, when it uh, really made uh, its appearance in England and possibly the rest of the world. But as these, these dolls as are English, uh, we need to talk more about really what happened in England. 
So it's been used since Tudor times, but it made a resurgence in the Edwardian period. Now I also want to talk a little bit about the introduction of Pebble Dash and uh, when it uh, really made uh, its appearance in England and possibly the rest of the world. But as these, these dolls as are English, uh, we need to talk more about really what happened in England. So it's been used since Tudor times, but it made a resurgence in the Edwardian period. During the Edwardian period and the Art Nouveau period, um, it starts to make comeback around 1905, which incidentally is when most of these dolls' houses with Pebble Dash date from. Um, it seems to be more prevalent just after the Great War, so they probably started introducing it to dolls' houses, particularly lines, um, before the First World War in 1914. Obviously, all dolls' houses, uh, the Lions period obviously stretches out from late 1800s uh, up to effectively 1972. They would have followed um, all of the fashions of the day um, with the dolls' houses. I also collect vintage radios and vintage jukeboxes, and they are exactly the same. I'm presently uh, restoring this jukebox for a friend of mine. Now this dates from 1938 and uh, again you can see the fashions. Um, this is from the late Art Deco period so it's, it dates from 1938-39 um, but exactly the same as the dolls houses. They do follow these designs of the, the fashion of the day. Now it's my belief that because of that, this particular model, uh, which is either known as the 37 or seemingly so the 43, uh, was probably down to that very reason that production ceased in uh, 1914 for the war effort, and leases does seem to be pre-1914, uh, and then started up again in 50, uh, sorry in 19, and I believe that mine dates from that period. Now, the fashion was probably taken up again, as it did on real houses, after the Great War. During the Great War period, 14 to 18, uh, lines ceased production to do with toys to do, obviously, the war effort work. So, any materials that they would have had, they would probably have stockpiled. And then, after the war ended in 1919, in 1920, they would have started again with these. So whilst uh, waiting for this second coat of Bondo to cure, I thought I'd go back to the front door and try a bit more sand in this detail. Uh, it's quite challenging for me in that obviously I'm trying very, very hard to uh, retain as much of this genuine wallpaper as possible. Uh, it's getting close now, uh, but there'll be an equal amount of challenge to mask up areas to be painted. Another thing I like to do whilst in between stages is to th just think ahead a little bit and see what the moves ahead are going to be. Now on this occasion I thought I'd have a look at the uh, the original windows. Now I'm very fortunate over Lisa that I have got all the original windows which were given to me when I bought it off Michael Morse at the Dolls House shop in North Leach. And uh, on stripping them you can see they are actually brown. Whilst looking at a recent picture that I found of uh, exactly the same uh, doll's house as this in every way, the windows were showing up brown and uh, we've, we didn't believe this to start with but you can clearly see I've just gone through enough paint there and they are indeed brown. And I always thought that they were brown on looking at all the pictures I could see. Uh, there's an undercoat under the black which is green but beneath that uh, it is uh, so there's two windows out of the five of the little windows and obviously also we need to do the big window which is still glazed at the moment so I need to remove that glass and we have also uh, did a little, done a little experiment on the front door 
Now in pictures, the front door is coming up as a sort of light mauve, and indeed under the black it is light mauve. Now I want to say a little bit about this house, which I believe is 1905-1906 uh, Lions House. And it's actually, I believe, a number 17. Um, it was kindly given to me by Julie Pottle and Amanda Francis, and I thank them very much for it, because it's one of my very favourite houses. But we wanted to add this into our video, just as a little bit of a comparison and trying to date our houses. You'll notice the uh, difference right away in the windows, in that they're pre-metal windows. Uh, there's a few things that would date this to the mid-1900s. Uh, first of all, the actual roof paper, if you can see that well enough, uh, which is slightly different to the ones used in the 1920s uh, period. Also, the chimneys, which I believe Lisa's probably should have, or albeit it may be just slightly later ones, but you can clearly see the, uh, the chimneys which are original are wallpapered. Uh, and on this one you did have the wallpaper coining, uh, which may or might not be original. Uh, it might be that it should have the slightly later paper. But the side uh, door is, and it is a side door, which is interesting. Julie wasn't aware till I pointed it out to her that uh, the front doors are low hinges, which probably are original as engine, but it should have also hinged on the side, so you can see where the hinges clearly used to be. So it may well have been double hinged. Other things to point out would be the balustrading. Now the balustrading has got higher balustrading and very slender part painted gold and part painted green which must be absolutely original and also the gold lining which seems to uh, occur on the earlier lines. Uh, so we will open it up. This house has many original wallpapers, if not all of them. You can clearly see the lovely floor papers and the tile in there, which would be the kitchen, I believe. And then also there, and also there. Uh, they're all very different in actual fact. It's also got the original tin plate fireplaces. All four of them, four of them are in place. Now, if, if we look at the top there, I don't know if you can see the light through the side, and it's not connected to the middle, and exactly the same the other side. And this is where this double engine should take place. So, you would get the front doors and the side doors opening up completely, and obviously when I've done with it, it will. Other features we see is the oxblood base, which is another thing that seems to appear in these early, early, earlier lines houses, and the door, um, which is a lovely half glazed door, which again is something that we see on these earlier houses. Uh, all in all, beautiful thing. So I've now uh, used primer uh, on all the areas that have been filled and need priming ready for top coats. Uh, so that's uh, the new roof done. I've had to put a few nails in the sides where I've missed so that's sort of fixed that down better. There's a couple of areas still to fill on fine tuning. So now marrying the front door back up, uh, which obviously is still to be primed also, um, but it's starting to resemble a doll's house again, and a bit more like what it should do. Uh, this particular one should have a green base, so that's what we'll be doing there. 
Um, so there'll be the ivory white and the cream to spray in and then the same front. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of a test to see how close the green is that I've chosen. And actually it's not bad at all I don't think. Uh, there's a bit of a shadow there but even so you can see, see what I'm saying. Um, tip tilts it over slightly. Yeah I'm quite happy with that. A small filling and uh, flatting to do there but it's just to get an idea. A little bit more coat uh, uh, paint around where I need it's no problem. Greetings viewers uh, on this lovely Monday morning, dull as it is. Uh, continuation now with the 37 dolls house. Uh, completion of filling and uh, sanding required now uh, before the main house is ready for painting. And then I'll be now concentrating on uh, the front door and uh, masking that paper up and ready to start on that. Okay, so I've covered up all of the original wallpaper as best I can. All of the front door is as prepped as best as I can. So the only thing left to do is start painting. So wish me luck and uh, hopefully in the next uh, video you'll see the front door in a first coat of paint. See you later. So the next phase uh, basically is going to be top coating the rest of the house. A uh, little bit of flatting to do before then. Uh, but then top coating to be done. And uh, after that it's going to be wallpaper. And for that we need to source what we need. Um, but uh, all in all so far quite happy with the results. Uh, it's on track. Great stuff. Okay, so that's uh, the top coat on and uh, fingers crossed the paint won't have bleed through to the original wallpaper. Done my best with it. If it does, we'll have to reveal the masking tape once it's all dry. Uh, but if, if not, then obviously I will have to repaper it uh, again. There's no other way around it. Okay, so here we are continuing the work on the uh, DH37. So today I've stripped all the paint, new and old, off of the windows and parked the door but I've left it there to get the colour and started to strip the, uh, some of the, the fireplaces down and uh, the windows now ready for primer and then the top coat of brown paint. So also what I want to try and do today, I've done some of it is to start to paint the uh, creamy white paint that we use so I've done some of the apexes ready uh, but I now need to get some more paint and uh, do the sides and the inside where the paper is not showing so all the ceilings will have to be done and these edges on the front which are behind the front door so we can uh, start to see real progress now um, all of the front is painted and I've managed to save as much as the wallpaper as I can um, little bits will be touched in but even though it's dirty I think it looks it's 100 years old and I fully intend to keep it this way I think it adds a bit of charm like it or not um, so that's the main house as it stands now so great okay so all the windows have got primer on now so they are waiting for a nice coat of brown which is how it should be I believe and uh, then we can reattach the glass to it and then in a while we'll be finishing the top coat on the main house itself and then we can start attaching uh, windows back where they should be looking forward to that all of the main house is now top coated <coughs> so shouldn't need anything else now except papering so yeah quite happy with that just got to take the masking tape off obviously where the green paint for the base is and uh, we'll get that off once this cream is dried and uh, yeah that's bits ready for papering quite pleased with that 
I've half stripped the door and I've stopped now because I need to get this mauve colour uh, to, to match the paint to repaint it uh, but I've put it in place just again to uh, get a general overall look and think about uh, how things are coming out but all in all quite happy uh, I think it's going to be a lovely doll's house uh, in the original colour well just a little test just to see uh, how generally uh, things are, are, are looking so here's all the painted windows obviously not fixed in not with glass yet um, just to see how the colours come out and a general test really and then just place this one to find the original nail holes that was there because these windows were glued when I got the doll's house. So in an effort to catch up with Kevin, I have started painting my dollhouse as well. So I've painted the back of my dollhouse uh, um, one coat and you can see I need to uh, paint the interior. So the ceilings are what's going to need some paint and uh, the front uh, trim of the dollhouse and of course around those interior uh, little doors as well um, so that uh, only the cream or um, antique white paint shows up and uh, I've got to paint um, pretty much everything. Unlike Kevin, I like to paint with a brush. Um, I really don't like using spray paint, although I did use it for the base. Uh, the reason why I don't like it is because I tend to get a little carried away and then I get drips. <laughs> so I feel like I have more control when I paint it with a brush. Um, and then that way I get a really nice even coat. So I'm using a paint and primer all in one, which I prefer for restoring dollhouses. Um, because then that way I don't have to... Uh, use like you know any undercoat uh, I can just use the primers already kind of built in so um, and this dollhouse will require two full coats of this uh, this paint so this is the hardest part is getting in here behind that front porch and uh, getting the little trim pieces uh, nice and even so that it doesn't look cakey at all um, so I'm just kind of uh, going in and uh, it's going to take me about five hours to do this job, believe it or not. It doesn't look like much, but uh, yeah, it's quite time consuming to do it this way. So, but I'm really, really super pleased with uh, the way it turns out. So you can see here, I uh, did not paint the sides because they're going to be wallpapered in the brick paper. And uh, I am going to be, of course, using the paper on the roof. And you can see there that I did spray the base with uh, the black. I'm not so happy about that black, but that is the original color. So that's what I went with. I would have much preferred it to have been oxblood or, um, you know, the nice green color that Kevin's is. But uh, my original color actually is black. And the same for my windows. My windows are actually black. So that's what I kind of got to do. So <laughs> what can you do? So I really don't want to alter the authenticity of the house. And I want to keep it as original as possible. So uh, there it is inside the house. It's dried now. There's two full coats on it. And I did get really good coverage. And there are the chimneys that I made. They don't have the tops with the pots on it. But uh, as you can see, they're a perfect fit. I did make another set of chimneys that I wasn't pleased with. And so that's my second go at it. And then here's the chimney pots, which Kevin kindly suggested using broomsticks. <laughs> Seriously, that's what they are. They're broomsticks. And uh, they're absolutely perfect. And I'm going to be uh, using uh, brick paper on my chimneys as well. So you can see here, um, my the back of my roof uh, was broken. So how I fixed it was I took some hot paper towel and some clamps and then I put a stuff to sharpie in behind it and I let it soak for about three hours 
And then as soon as it was finished soaking for three hours, I took the wet paper towel out. I clipped it with a clip and a Sharpie and I let it sit overnight. I love, absolutely love this door knocker that comes with line stall houses. Unfortunately, I did not get a door with my house, so I have to build my own door. And uh, so I needed a door knocker. So here's one that I've made out of porcelain. It has not yet uh, been fired in the kiln, so we shall see. I made a couple of them, so I have a couple to choose from. Oops, I knocked the nose off. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to paint it up so it looks exactly like the one that uh, um, actually is supposed to come with the dollhouse. I think they're so beautiful, the original ones. And this is the Krylon UV resistant matte spray that I'm going to be using on all of the papers, which we'll talk to you about during the next video installment. Also have a couple other things in my stash I'm going to be using. So this is the doorknob that I plan on using uh, on my house um, because I didn't get a doorknob and um, I've also found this uh, little brass letter slot that I'm going to put on my door so can't wait to show it to you. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to help support my channel you can do so by buying me a coffee. Just go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash Lisa Dobo. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everyone that has helped to support my channel by going to buymeacoffee.com. It's appreciated more than you know. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. It's free to subscribe and it really does help my channel grow. Please hit the notification bell and then that way you'll know every time I upload a new video. And I really enjoy reading your comments. And thank you very much, Kevin, for this wonderful collaboration. I'm having so much fun doing it. And kind of, to be honest with you, having a little bit of trouble catching up with you. Mind you, I'm going to be a little bit behind because my windows are being 3D scanned right now. So that's going to hold me back a little bit. But I did buy the glass for them. <laughs> oh, well. well, thank you very much for watching today. And as always, have the best day ever.